Hey guys, it's Andy Elliott. The video you're about to watch is a meetup of a special private retreat that I did at my house in Scottsdale, Arizona. These leaders, seven, eight, nine figure business owners flew out from everywhere around the country and I'm explaining to them in this video how to build culture, how to build an environment to house and build killers. If you wanna build the greatest team in the world, check this video out. My You know, people work for a manager for a paycheck, they work for the leader for blood, sweat, and tears because they want to follow the mission, okay? So I want to tell you a way that I make my people kill ego. So a leader can kill ego in any situation, right? And so like you got to understand how to do this. So I'm going to give you an example, okay? So I walk, by the way, there's two things that I do that I, I have never known a company to this day to do this, but I did it because I figured this out. Number one, and they say, well, how do, how do you get people to not have ego and want to hate each other and... You know, people are against each other. Well, it's really simple. So I, I do a meeting. I do, I, I'm the only one that runs meetings in my companies. Now I'll let my other guys do separate meetings, but my meetings are really tactical. They're important. They're only X amount of time. I'll tell them, hey, I have a 20 minute meeting and we're done. Most people want to have a meeting just to hear themselves talk. Am I right? And that's why nobody wants to have a meeting with them. But if they know that you're a guy or gal that has a meeting and your meetings stick, they count, they help people, they always wanna show up to your meetings because they know your meetings count, okay? So I'm like, hey, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you guys know I do a 20 minute meeting. I'm gonna bring the heat, I'm gonna bring value, it's gonna change your life, and you're gonna get the fuck out of there and win. Everybody good? All right, let's go. On one of those meetings, and I'll decide when it is, I'll say, all right guys, this morning, this meeting isn't gonna be a normal meeting. It's gonna be, today we're gonna go around and everyone in the room is gonna say something that they didn't like that someone else did in the room that pissed them off. That's what you're gonna do. Is everybody in here real winners and, and men and, and, and leaders? Yes or no? Everybody's like, yes. Does everybody respect each other in this room? Notice how I'm setting the standard. I'm framing them. Okay, does everybody respect each other in this room? Yes or no? Yes, raise your hand if you don't respect someone in this room. Okay, you better respect people in this room because I guarantee everyone in this room deserves grace. Just like when you mess up, they mess up, you give them grace. Does everybody understand? Does everybody think that, you, that everybody deserves the same grace that you should get when you mess up? Notice how I'm framing them. And then I say, okay, all right, we're gonna start with you. Stand up, and boom, person will stand up. And I say, all right, look around the room, and I want you to say something to someone in the room that somebody did that pissed you off, upset you, or that you didn't like. Go, and they'll look, and they'll be like, I didn't like it when Joey did this thing with that customer. Okay, why didn't you like it? Because I feel like that was my customer, I've been talking to him for three months, then he went and called them, and then it's like, okay, all right. What do you gotta say? And it gives me an opportunity to let them answer back. What they should say is this. Number one, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. That I didn't mean to do that. I respect you. I would never wanna steal your customer. Matter of fact, I'll give you that deal. I'll split that deal with you. You know, I'll correct. I apologize. I, did, I didn't know it bothered you, but now that I know, I will never do it again. That should be what they say. But if they say, no, man, that's stupid. That, that was my customer. Okay, hold on, stop. Let them talk. Right? Listen, bottom line is, you guys both, do you both agree that you guys are both on the same mission? You're on the same family. If someone were to come against the family, your brother and sister, if somebody were to come against the family, what would we do? You guys don't kill each other. You guys are family, okay? Look, there was a mistake that was made. Did you mean to screw her over? Do you think that he meant to screw you over? Was it an accident? Okay, wasn't it intentional, but you made a mistake and now you realize that you don't ever want to do that again because you saw the way it hurts her. Okay, you guys get, get over here and give each other a hug, come on. And they're like, eh, I'm like, fucking hug each other, we're not gonna move on. You guys wanna be in here all fucking day? And they're like, okay, fine. And they walk over and give each other a hug and everybody starts fucking laughing. And I say, okay, stand up. And boom, next person stands up. Go ahead, it's your turn. Be, I'm dead serious. I wanna know who pissed you off in this room and did something. Go ahead, this is your chance. And by the way, don't be a fucking coward. Don't be a coward, tell them. They're not gonna be mad at you, they're gonna respect you by telling them the truth. Dude, I make people get really uncomfortable. And so they go around and everybody says something to someone in the room that did something that upset them. And then I say, okay, did you mean to do that? Did you mean to do that? You didn't wanna really hurt them, did you? No, you guys love each other, right? Okay, cool, we'll give each other a fucking hug. What am I doing? I'm literally killing all the toxicness and all the cancer in my company. It can't survive with me around. I won't let it survive. I'll kill it, I'll hunt it out, I'll find it. See, and we didn't know that these two had it, but I, I made them bring it out. See, there's this thing called resentment that once it starts to build, it gets really strong. There's this thing called death by a thousand paper cuts. It's just, it's just cut, 
cut, cut, cut, cut. Somebody, something happens in a company, they get upset. Something happens over here, then something happens. And then that person didn't say hi. All of a sudden they start making up stories, right? Remember this, who's in charge? You are, are these your people? Yeah, look, a real leader in a company views everyone else as his or her children. They're your children. And basically the way that I see it, I got three kids. When someone takes over my kids, they better fucking take care of them. I don't, dude, hey, they might be 28 years old, but they're my kids. Dude, when you're 80 and your kids are, are, are 50, they're still your baby kids. You don't ever, I don't think anyone ever gets to a point where they stop saying that's my baby girl or that's my that's my my beautiful they don't they don't do, people don't do that as parents hey guys if you're watching this video and you're like dude i need to build a badass team or i need i need to become a great leader or one day i want to be a leader or andy i want to become the greatest in the world i don't care what you do there's going to be a link below in the youtube description it says training coach with andy you answer about eight or nine questions i want to ask some questions i want to see where your head's at i want to see what I wanna see what you're thinking. I wanna see how you view the world, how you believe the world views you. I wanna see why you follow me. Answer some of these questions, and if I feel like you qualify as somebody that I wanna coach and train, which I'll change your whole freaking life, okay? If you do, I'll reach out to you in the next 24 hours. So guys, link below, description box, at this time. If you're like, Andy, I wanna to go to another level, I believe I have more potential, I want you to take me there. Go answer those questions, fill that out, and I'll reach out to you in the next 24 hours. Let's kill it. So I think in about these are my children. These are all my children. Big jacked up guy. He's someone's kid, right? JJ's got a dad or a mom somewhere. Whether good or bad, he's someone's kid. You may say, Mike, he's a man. No, dude, dude, he's someone's kid though. Your job is to make that parent proud of the way that you're leading their child. See, now you're fucking understanding. This is how the psychology of the leader, shifting it can change a business faster than anything else. Dude, you gotta shift your perspective and the way you see stuff. Now listen, I, dude, I see dollar signs everywhere, bro. When I sold, if I could make 500 grand a year, I would have fucking been, where I came from in Oklahoma, you made 500 grand a year, you're rich. Okay, you're rich. One day I'm gonna do that an hour. And you know how I'm gonna do it? I'm gonna keep being a better leader and the more people I help, the more, the more I give, the more I get. I know, hey listen, and, and when you guys listen, you, there's a difference between successful people and really successful people. When you deal with successful people, wait, wait success, early success. You go buy the car, the boat, the house. It's like you fucking made it. I was just talking to John the other day and he's like, I'm selling all my fucking shit, right? He's like, I sold my Lamborghini, sold my fuck shit, sold my shit. He's like, because he don't care about it no more. He's like, I just want to help people get better. He's like, I got this guy. He's doing this thing now. He's making 700 grand. I love seeing his success. See, success early on versus real success. Real, and, and if I can teach you how to put yourself in these shoes of really successful people, even before you have success, go buy yourself a Ferrari. Go buy yourself a lifted ass diesel. Go buy yourself something cool. Who gives a shit? But take fucking care of people. And so everybody you're running into, and guess what? Never let someone trigger you. See, I'm a closer. I don't eat out of your hand. You eat out of my fucking hand. Okay, let me explain what I mean. It's not like I'm running the show, but my goal is ultimately, my motive is to make you a better person and to make sure that we all stay calm and everybody gets what they want and we all win. My goal is to grow. I want us to win, okay? Me and my wife have a, have a saying, if someone wins, no one wins. If we get into a fight and I win, I just hurt her. Good fucking job. I, I lost. Now she's mad at me for three days. But by the way, same thing with her. If she fucking hurts me, now I fucking mad at her for three days. Like now she's running around and she's fucking miserable. Good job. It's like you gotta you gotta understand the psychology of how you think about stuff is super important. So number one, I make people openly have conversations. Now, you guys have to be really good communicators. You'll notice how I'm like, hey, what did he say? You didn't mean to do that. I'm like fucking leading the conversation. You didn't mean to do that, did you? No, okay. And you know that she didn't mean to do that, right? Okay, and you guys love each other, fucking, right? It's like, I'm just closing everybody in the room. And I'm basically allowing them to have a conversation that they would have a really difficult time. But if I let them run, like, what, tell her, oh, what did you think? Then they'll start fighting. So I tell them how to think because I'm already 10 steps ahead of how they should think. And then, super important, I make them fucking hug. So there's these chemicals in your body, you guys heard me talk about it, and there's this drug called oxytocin, it's a chemical. It's a biological reward when someone does something like, hey, good job, you did a good job. Boom, you get this chemical release, okay? When you're with someone you care about and you hold hands, chemical release, you feel love. Okay, when you're just touching someone's hand, giving someone a hug creates oxytocin. 
It's a chemical. Your body releases it and goes, oh, this feels good. Does that make sense? So what do I do? I, I, I make these chemicals get released in people by making them hug each other. You can't fix anyone else if you can't fix yourself. If you're in this room and you're like, yeah, when I leave here, I'm gonna go home and fix my whole team. No, dude, you're gonna fix you and then they're gonna see that you fixed yourself and then they're gonna wanna be like you. You can't just go tell it. You can't go home and fix your partner. You gotta fix you and then your partner's like, Fuck you're different. And you're like, oh, I'm glad you noticed. Yeah, I'm trying to do better. Well, I want to do better with you. Okay, now, now, now they come. Does that make sense? The biggest thing is that we go to these conferences and leaders go back home and they tell everybody what they need to start doing because they learned all this shit and they're like, oh, he went to another conference. No, dude, you go home and kick fucking ass and give them visual proof. If right now in the middle of the night, I was sleeping in my bed and I heard a in this room, what do you think I would do? Get the fuck up. I'd want to come see with my eyes, what is it? Why? Because our eyes, we have to visually see shit to really believe it, okay? Would somebody hear a loud noise in their house and be like, mm, it's probably nothing. No, you're like, I need to see it with my eyes. And so like, people are like that too. Like you come in fucking telling me I need to do all this shit. Like I need to see it with my eyes with you. You need to show me what it is that you're telling me so I can see it, so I can duplicate it. But if you tell me and you don't duplicate it, I can't see my eyes, I don't believe you, and now you blew your shot to be my leader. And so like, does that make sense? Okay, hey, if I tell you, I'm like, listen, you, you can make $100 million. You're like, come on, man. And I'm like, look, let me show you my fucking pay stub. You're like, oh, fuck. what do I need to do? And all of a sudden, you're like real fucking serious about shit. It's like, got to see it with your eyes. Okay? You gotta believe before you can see it, but some people have to see it. Most people have to see it, okay? So I wanna tell you guys that like the eyes thing, like you being able to do what you tell other people they can do is amazing. You outworking everybody makes them wanna work harder. You being loving to your wife and being a badass at work shows people you can be affectionate, have a badass relationship, and kick ass at work. You staying in phenomenal fucking shape, being kick ass in your relationship, and destroying it at work. Coming home every day, speaking differently at work, talking different, learning new language. You know, instead of listening to music, plugging into self-development, new language, new skills, sales, skill stacking like a son of a bitch, getting closer to God, not tr getting triggered and overreacting so much. Right now, if you're an overreactor, which you, means you get angry easily in a relationship or in your job, next time something bothers you and you say, babe, it's no big deal, man. She's like, wow, you know, you usually get mad. I'm like, no, man. Last thing I'd ever want to do is hurt you. She's like, what the fuck is going on? Because you changed. And then all of a sudden, she's like, man, I want to be different to him now. See, who you become determines how all these spider webs fly out around you. Now, everybody already knows this. You guys, I didn't tell you anything differently you didn't know now, but I'm telling you, you have to start doing this shit that you know or you're going to stay fucking stuck. Oh, I didn't tell you what the second thing I did with my team is. I'm all about, um, so I have 90% males in my company, 10% females, okay? So I, every month, I have a meeting with all the spouses, the girlfriends and the boyfriends of the entire company. So if you guys work for me, I would say, hey guys, Tuesday, this Tuesday, I need your girlfriend, I need your wife, I need your wife, I need your girlfriend, I need your wife, I need them all. I need her, I don't want you, I need her, okay? I need, all, I need your partner. I need everybody here, okay? You're not gonna be here. I need to talk to your families. And what do I do? I paint the fucking picture. The Elliott Group is building your husband, your wife, your partner standards, okay? When they go home, they live by these core values. See these Elliott only 3.0 core values? And I know all you guys and I love you, but these core values I enforce at work. When they go home, is Ian and Evan living by these standards? Okay, are they accepting responsibility? Are they taking the initiative? If they see a piece of trash on the ground, I know it seems little, but are they taking the responsibility of like, oh, there's a piece of paper. Oh, now I'm gonna take the initiative and pick it up off the ground, throw it in the fucking trash can. If they go and they open this and the trash can is full, right? Do they take it out or do they act like they don't see it and just throw something back in there? Look, I wanna know, how are your men operating in the home? Because if they're coming here, I need you to know the standards. So ladies, here's the core values. You guys know what they are. I talk about them every month because I do it every month. Go fucking hang this shit on the mirror, okay? You're gonna help me make your husbands stronger. Okay, can you guys do that? Ladies, can we do that? Men, can we do that? Can you guys help me fucking do that? When your man is with me, because they're mostly, they're, they're, or, 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 they're mostly uh, uh, men in my company, so they're, they're, I'm talking to their wives uh, or their girlfriends, I'm saying when your men are with me, do you wanna know that I'm making them better for you? Yes or no? Okay, 
There's no other company in the world that you're gonna send your man to and they're gonna send him home to you better. And here I am, so I'm telling you what I'm doing, but I need your help, okay? Now listen, ladies, you can build your man up to be strong, make him feel like he's a king, and he'll come kick ass at work. You can build him up or you cut his legs off, okay? So don't, don't be destroying your men at home. Build them up. Tell them what you see in them. Hey, if they're making mistakes and they're, and they're not doing well, you know, and they're not believing in themselves, you got to tell them what you see in them. You got to help me. I'm doing it here, but you got to do it there. Okay? If I was to give a man a million dollar cash or his wife to say, I'm proud of you. Most men would say, I would rather my wife say I'm proud of me. the money. I want to know my family's proud of me. That's the secret. You guys hold the secret. I need your help. Dude, I do these meetings with my team's spouses, with their girlfriends. And then what happens? Well, now I'm pushing them in at work and now they're pushing them right from home. Dude, I have built, fucking built a tornado that's running around. Do you guys get it? Okay, so I'm just sharing what I do, okay?